I'm working in the New Perspectives Microsoft Access 2010 textbook. I'm in Tutorial 2. I'm on page AC59 and I'm going to create a table in Design View. I've been asked in this page to create the invoice table in Design View. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks as we walk through this. I'm going to go ahead and close the navigation pane. Click on Create. Table Design. So it's going to open the table in Design View. Now to make it a little easier for you to see, I'm going to change the layout of my window. And I'll start with my first field, which is Invoice Num. I'm going to key in Invoice Num, making sure that there are no spaces between the words and that the first letter of each word is capitalized. That just makes it easier to read. After I key in those first that first field name, I'm going to press F2. The F2 key will simply select the text that's in that, sh that cell. I'm going to press Control C, which is the shortcut keyboard command for copy. And I'm going to show you why I copied this in just a second. Press Tab to move to the data type. The most common data type in the table is the text data type. And Access will automatically select it. I'll press my Tab key again, and I'm going to key in primary key. I'll press F6 on my keyboard, and that's going to take me down to my field properties. I'm going to set my field size for 4, and I'll either enter down, tab down, cursor down, until I end up in the caption field. Once I'm in the caption field, I'm going to press Control V, Control V, V as in victory, to paste in the field name that I copied from up above. That eliminates the necessity for me to retype this field name and I'll just cursor over and put a space between the two words. Now the F6 key is a toggle key and normally it will take you, or in older versions of Access, it would take you back up to where you stopped. In Access 2007 and in 2010, it doesn't toggle like it did before, so it's actually easier just to click back up in the field design area. The next field I'm going to put in is my contract num, and I'm going to do the same thing, F2, Control c press, it's going to be a text field. I can move over, tab over, it's going to be foreign key. Now foreign key and primary key, right now, these are primarily designators to let you as the designer of this table know how those fields are used. When you're creating your own databases, you don't really need to put in primary key or foreign key unless it helps you remember that you're going to set one as the primary key and the other is going to be the common field, the linking field between the tables when we get into the relationship design. Again, F6, I'm going to set my field size to 4 and I'm going to come down to caption. I'm going to paste in that field name that I just keyed. I'm going to go click back up. I'm going to put in invoice amount again with the F2 and the Control c to copy that, and this is going to be a currency field. And if I just press C on my keyboard, it will take me to the first occurrence of a data type that begins with the letter C within this list, and you can see that is currency. There is another one cal called Calculated, and we're not going to get into that in Chapter 2. This is a new feature in Access 2010 and something that violates the rules of normalization and that's something better saved for advanced access. I'm going to hit my tab key again. There is no description on this one. F6 to move down below and I'm going to leave it set as currency. The decimal places, the default is auto. Auto when you're using a currency field is 2, but just to make sure that you end up with 2, we're going to key the 2 in there. Move down to caption, paste in the caption by pressing Control V, put the space in there, and click to get back up. Invoice date, again the F2 and the Control C. I'm going to press D on my keyboard. If you look at the drop down list, you see that date time is the only one that begins with a D. I'll tab from there and F6 to go down to my format and my format, I'm going to key in the format. It's going to be month, month, forward slash, DD, forward slash, Y, 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 Y. Make sure it's 224. It's going to give you your two digit month, two digit, two digit day, and four digit year. And we'll move on down to put in the caption. 
and that will be invoice date and move back up and we're going to put in invoice paid and again the F2 and the control C to copy that. This is going to be a boolean field, a yes, no. And we want to know here whether or not the invoice has been paid. So let's move down. The default format in 2010 is true false. This is not the, the same default format in earlier versions of Access. So I'll push yes. I just put pushed Y on my keyboard because there's only three options here, true false, which would be T, yes, no, which would be Y, and on off, which would be O on the keyboard. Now move out of there, and my default value of zero means that it's going to be no, and so it will be blank. And oops, I missed my caption there. We'll put the caption in, invoice paid. And I'm going to go ahead at this point and save the table. The table is going to be saved as invoice. Click OK. Now we've been asked to make some When I click to save the table, since I have not defined the primary key yet, Access is going to ask me if I want to define a primary key. If you say yes, and I'm going to go ahead and say yes here. If I say yes, it's going to create an auto number field. It's going to call it ID and it's going to set it as primary key. Well, that's not the field I want. So I'll just click in that field. I'll delete that row, say, click yes, and set invoice number as my primary key. I'll go ahead and save the table again. I have also been asked in this section to move a few fields around and insert another field. I want to move the invoice amount field so that it is below the invoice date. I could either move the invoice amount below invoice date or invoice date above invoice amount. In the textbook they move invoice amount, so I'll move invoice date by simply selecting it. I select it and basically then let go of your mouse. Select it, move your mouse pointer back into the selection bar to the left of the field names. Click, hold, and drag. The dark line is going to tell you where that field will end up. And so that I want invoice num, contract num, invoice date, invoice amount, and invoice paid. Now I'm going to insert a field between invoice date and invoice amount. Select the field that is below where you want the new field to go. It will access, when it inserts a row, it's going to insert it above your location. That makes sense. How would you get to insert a field that is above the first one in the design grid? So I'm going to click on Invoice Amount. I'm going to click in Insert Row. And the field that I'm going to insert is going to be Invoice Item. If I can spell it correctly here, press F2 to select it, Control C to copy it. It's going to be a text field. I'll move down below, and this is going to be 40, and my caption will be Invoice Item. I'll go ahead and click Save again, and I'm going to change to Data Sheet View by clicking the View toggle in the upper left-hand corner. I could also go down to the lower right-hand corner and I have defined my fields and if I want to resize them I make sure that I select only the fields that I've designated as fields and don't select the click to add. If I select the click to add, I'll show you, it's going to open up that shortcut menu. So you don't want to select that one. Just highlight the fields that are actually fields. Move your mouse pointer over any one of the column dividers and double click and it will resize your column. Now, design <laughs> changes need to be saved. Data doesn't need to be. Data saves automatically. This is a design change, so I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to go ahead and enter my first record. My first record is over on AC74, and I'll type in 2011, and I can hit Enter or Tab, and 3011, Enter or Tab, Invoice Date, I need to put in the slashes. We have not set up an input mask, so I have to put in the slash 3, 23, and 13. And when I push enter, it's going to add this, the leading zero and it's going to change 13 to 2013. I'll type in 
schematic plan. The invoice amount is 1500. All I have to do is type in 1500. No currency symbol, no comma, no dot decimal point. And it's paid. And so I just press my space bar and that will mark it as paid. Hit enter. It's going to remove me back to the start of the next record. 2031. And this is for 3020. And the date is 4 slash 19 slash 13. It's also a schematic plan, um, plan, so I can hold down my control key and press my apostrophe, and it'll copy the value from the cell immediately above. And I'm going to press control and spacebar, enter. And you would enter the rest of the records in that manner. That is the end of this segment.